Chito Fehadan signing in for another Anamorphic on a Budget video reviews. Uh, this time we're gonna talk about another classic Anamorphic adapter, the Panasonic AGLA7200. Uh, it's the widest Anamorphic adapter available, made for the DVX100, the camera that revolutionized indie filmmaking. The name of the lens reads LA for lens adapter, 72 because it has a deep 72mm filter thread. This one that I got from Gearhouse Camera Rentals has a blank 72 ring around it to make life easier. And 00, zero because it has no front threads. A stretch is 1.33 to make the DVX100 4x3 sensor into 16x9. On a modern DSLR that converts into 2.36 to 1 cinemascope aspect ratio. Well, considering the size of the front element, it would be hard to have threads in there. And the adapter has this cool looking rectangular square shape, so this immediately implies that you're not using a regular lens. The Panasonic is one of the go-to anamorphic adapters for beginners, because working with it is rather simple. Just uh, screw your lens at the back, and you're good to go. Later on, you struggle with close focus and large apertures, but not at the start. Time and time again, this Panasonic is used on a major super cool internet hit, such as Prospect, and there are plenty of other reviews, videos and tests about it. Let's talk about some stuff that isn't mentioned on these regular reviews. Like, there's two versions of this lens, one with this hoodie here, and one without it. I once designed a sort of clamp that I would glue inside of here with 105mm threads, but I ended up selling it along with my Panasonic a couple of years ago. The one with the hoodie uh, can also hold 105mm filters if you wedge them in here. Also at some point, Andrew Reed from EOS HD has posted that the Lomo Photon A diopter, which is a square lens, works great with the Panasonic that caused the virtual extinction of those diopters. They're long gone and they're super hard and expensive to find. As you might have noticed by now, it is hard to find diopters for this adapter because of its massive front glass element. Aligning it is pretty easy, just unlock, rotate and lock again. And if you don't have a flashlight to create flares and align with that, there's a nice trick that you can do by putting on the lens cap and just straighten out the square in the middle and you're good to go. It's a light lens at 400 grams with the downside of having a full plastic body which can easily crack or break. Also, the square glass elements in the front and the back will make no oval bokeh, of course. There has been no variation of price since its release years ago. It used to sell for a thousand bucks, it still sells for a thousand bucks on eBay. Auctions usually go for five or six hundred dollars, which is much more affordable. It's a lens that is largely available, it's always up on eBay, but I believe a thousand bucks for this is not a fair price, it's way too high. The LA7200 gets good detail in its focus range from 4 meters to infinity and it's very poor at close focus. You can see my failed attempts at using smaller diopters, a 77 millimeter, and getting massive vignetting. It has bad image quality at the edges, but somewhat better than the centuries. It really struggles with long lenses, rendering terrible results at 85 and 135 millimeters. I don't know why, but this specific one I have here has a soft spot near the center. I could see it while shooting these tests, but I couldn't find it when I was shooting the world test. The Panasonic's flares are strong, thin, long and super saturated blue. They are similar but not identical to the centuries. I guess it's the quality of the glass and the coatings used for these DV adapters. Winner by far, with no vignetting at 28mm and full frame sensor. At 35, you even get rid of some of the worst edge areas. It shines with wide angles and works very well with modern wide zooms, such as Canon 17-40mm, the one I have here, or the 16-35 f2.8, covering the entire sensor of an APS-C camera, such as the 50D I used to shoot these tests. The LA7200 is easy to handle and performs incredibly good at wide angles. It's good for that documentary feel camera. It doesn't like longer lenses requiring diopters even more than the century. And diopters are very hard to find. 
I taped a whole bunch of them in order to get this video kind of in focus. It's also very soft at fast apertures, showing its best performance when the taking lens is top down to f4 or f5.6. It flares pretty easily. Flares are easy on the eyes and helpful in alignment, which is also a breeze due to the lens rectangular shape. It's a very simple lens and gives you good stuff right out of the box, but in order to get incredible shots, you'll have to know it well and play its strong side, finding solutions creatively and sometimes tweaking your shots to the lens's needs. We reached the end of this episode, but do not worry, next week I'll be back with new content. Subscribe to get the videos as soon as they come online. And it's never too much, check my blog so you can get the written versions of all the reviews as well as the full Anamorphic on a Budget guide. I'm working on some other videos involving the Panasonic to make it shine easier. Stay tuned, see you guys next week.